Let me welcome you today to our today's session. Um, uh, today, I just want us to look at um, advanced financial decisions. Advanced financial decisions. And I have said uh, from this topic, we are borrowing a lot uh, from what we, we did under section three. I remember you are doing the cost of capital, where we are looking on the uh, the existing capital structure um, and how do the organization finance their projects. And basically, the most important aspect which you are able to look in this case, we used to analyze the, the, the following. Uh, we used to analyze the ordinary share capital. We used to analyze um, uh, the preference share capital, and then we used to analyze the the long term debt, but basically, um, what we have to be looking at it because that is the discussion that we are going to be discussing today. Uh, basically, I just want to give out a definition here regarding to uh, what we are doing. Uh, as I continue elaborating due to time, we are saying these these are decisions. They are the decisions on how or now the farm. These are the decisions on how the farm raises its funds. Raises its funds. Normally raises its funds for undertaking. For undertaking. For undertaking stroke. For undertaking stroke investing in its projects investing in its projects investing in its projects those are some of the key things which we have already discussed those are the things which i was just trying to elaborate how do the organizations invest in these projects we normally use the financial decisions and we are saying it is divided into four it is divided it is normally divided into four, right? One, we normally discuss about the weighted, the weighted average cost of capital, the average weighted cost of capital. Basically, we used to call it WSEC. The second one, we used to discuss about the weighted, the weighted marginal cost of capital. We used to talk about WMCC, right? The other one we used to discuss about, oh, we will be able to add some, uh, cap, uh, some serious knowledge here. We used to talk about uh, the capital structure theories. Capital structure theories. The capital structure theories. Then the number four, and the last one that we shall be able to cover here, we shall discuss about some special topics, special topics in financing, special topics in financing. But what I basically know is that we have already covered the past two in our previous, um, um, uh, in our previous levels, which we have already done. And we remember very well, when we were discussing these ones, uh, basically uh, we were discussing about uh, looking on the existing capital structure of the organization through WMCC. But when we are going to be looking on the WMCC, we are going to be checking on where can we be able to raise more funds without affecting the existing capital structure of the organization. And that one is going to be done through the, uh, the weighted marginal cost of capital. And to go very quickly regarding to that, uh, allow me just to be able to, to analyze about... Um, um, the weighted average cost of capital. But uh, uh, before that, I remember that uh, the capital structure theories, um, they basically used or they, they normally mean to explain, they are made to explain uh, the effects of the debt finance to the value of the farms and the WCC. I remember that under the capital uh, structure theories, some of us might have a knowledge about them, uh, is where we normally discuss about MM1, um, those are Modigliani and Miller propositions. 
uh, the net operating income. We also discuss about the traditional theories, um, the net income approach. The traditional theories, we covered them under topic one. We remember that. Um, among other criteria which we shall be able to learn there. Then later on, we shall be able to look on the special topics in finance. And uh, I remember there we shall be looking on the uh, some uh, specific areas like a mother model, the list of buy options, adjusted present value. It is a question which I was asked by a certain student about the adjusted present value, which is already tested. And I said, uh, rather than covering it under topic one, can we be able to cover it under the advanced uh, financial decisions? Shall be able to look on some questions which have been tested um, uh, um, up to the current um, in the previous sittings which we were uh, doing our exams. Those are some of the things that we shall be able to do as we go on. It is one of the key and uh, a bit of white topic which we should be uh, taking consideration. Um, I remember that uh, being asked, Malim, which areas can we be able to focus on? This one is one of the areas which you should be focusing for your exam. For your exam. So let us look on the weighted average cost of capital. Here we normally discuss about WMCC, uh, WCC, sorry. So what do we remember about the WCC? Let me just give the definition of the WCC. We are saying that uh, to, to, when you're looking on the WCC, we are saying it is the combined cost. It is the combined, it is the combined cost. Of the it is the combined cost of the existing funds. Existing funds, it is the combined cost of the existing funds being used. Being used, it is the combined cost being used to undertake. Being used to undertake the farms existing ones, the farms existing projects the funds existing project. It is the combined cost of the existing funds being used to, uh, to undertake the farm's existing project. Now, in this case, we say it is the combined cost. It is the combined costs made up of, uh, made up of the component costs, made up of the component costs, is the combined cost which is made up of the component cost that is right which is made up of the component cost that is we can discuss about the cost of equity which we used to write as ke right we normally have the cost of preferentials the cost of preferentials we discuss about kp and then we normally have the cost of long term debts long term the cost of long term debt the cost of long term debt we discuss about kd we discuss about kd now let's start by analyzing this component cost right and i will be able to start with the first one where we have to be talking about the cost of equity and in this case remember this is a question which was in our last semester quest, uh, exam it was there and some students normally tell you these questions were tough. How? These are the things which I normally tackle in class, and uh, through good revision, you can be able to uh, you can be able to set through uh, when these exams are coming. Now, when it, we talk about the cost of equity, we are saying the cost of equity is the required rate of return. It is the required. It is the required rate of return. It is the required rate of return. It is the required rate of return to the providers, to the providers, to the providers of equity, to the providers of equity finance, to the providers of equity finance, to the providers of equity finance. And remember, when we are discussing about the cost of equity, the providers of uh, equity finance, they are the ordinary shareholders. These are the ordinary shareholders. They are your shareholders there. And we are saying, because already we have to be determining the formula used uh, to calculate the cost of equity. I remember the last time when I was doing, or when we were doing this, we said, let me just recall. 
when you are dealing with the uh, the issues with the the Godon dividend growth model, uh, when you are doing the mergers and acquisitions, we say it, to get the cost of equity, right? To get the cost of equity, we can be able to take the expected dividends to divide by the intrinsic value plus G. This is the time when we are given, right? It is the time when we are given the expected dividends. We normally use the one when we are given the expected dividends. Or when we are given the current dividends, we say, we normally use the O, one plus G, you divide by P, O plus G. But there are, some of the, uh, there are some of the few things in which we have to understand here that in case, in case of these um, shares being issued at discounts, right? In case of discounts on issue of shares, in case of discounts on the issue of shares, I should be talking about the discounts and flotation costs, right? It should be the discounts and what is our flotation cost? The flotation cost, these are the costs which are basically used, right? Um, they are the issue cost, by the way, uh, when we are issuing the shares to the public for subscription. So in case of the, uh, in case of the discounts or flotation, in short, uh, in short, they are normally written as, the first one is D or F, discounts or flotation cost, right? We are saying, it reduces, it reduces the share price. It reduces the share price. It normally reduces our share price. Therefore, when you are getting the KE here, right? When you are computing your KE, when you are computing your KE here, right? You for what? So when you are computing our KE, when we have some discounts and flotation, we say, can I be, for example, if I am given the current discount, uh, the current, I'm given the current dividends, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be doing? In this case, I say, I'm supposed to be taking the O, one plus G, we divide by the market value. This is the intrinsic value, which is normally affected by the discounts which we are, we are using and the flotation costs, right? <laughs> which we have already used when the shares are being issued to the public for subscription. So in this case, it reduces the market value, D minus F plus G, right? D plus F minus G there. And in this case, we say, right? We say, when you look on this equity, it comprises of the two things, which we have already uh, seen before. And then we say equity, equity comprises, Equity normally comprises of comprises of ordinary shares. They normally comprise the ordinary shares. Uh, the ordinary shares, or not the ordinary share, but the ordinary share capital. And retains earnings. And during this time, you are required to calculate the cost of equity for both. Now we say the cost of each, the cost of each is determined, the cost of each is determined in the same way, is normally determined in the same way, except, except that, it's normally determined in the same way, except that, in case of flotation, in case of flotation or issue cost. In case of flotations or issue costs, that is our F, right? They only affect ordinary shares. They only affect the ordinary shares. They normally affect the ordinary shares. They normally affect the ordinary shares. They normally affect the ordinary shares. Now, in this case, we are saying, why does it affect the ordinary shares only? It's because the retained earnings, the retained earnings 
are never are never issued. The retained earnings are not issued uh, to the public for subscription, and that is the case. So in that scenario, in that scenario, in that case now, when it reaches there, now how do we normally get the formulas for both? How do we normally get the formulas for both? Right? How do we normally get these formulas for both? It means if the both are appearing in the question, and basically they are used when we are raising the additional shares for both, um, uh, when we are raising more capital uh, to undertake the new projects, it means if I'm calculating the cost of equity for ordinary shares, for ordinary share capital, it means I'm supposed to be taking DO one plus G, you divide by PO minus D minus F plus growth rates, correct? But what about when I'm calculating the cost of equity of the retained earnings? It means I'm going to be taking DO one plus G, we divide by PO minus D plus G plus G. It means that the retained earnings are not affected by the flotation. The, the flotation alone affects the ordinary share capital because they are basically issued to the public for, for subscription. They are normally issued to the public for subscription. Now, in that regard, we say, can I be able to define what I've been uh, talking about here? We say where our D1, D1, it means these are the expected dividends. They are expected dividends. Or we talk about next year's, next year's dividends, right? Now, when we talk about the O, it means our DO, these are the dividends just paid. These are the dividends just paid, right? We also talk about, they can use the dividends for the year just ended. Dividend for the year just ended. Or they can use another name here, where they can say they are normally called current, uh, current year's dividends. Those are the names basically used to mean RDO. Then we have PO. We say these are current, um, these are current share price. It is a current share price. We have our D, which is our discount. We have our F. We are talking about the flotation costs. It is normally called the flotation cost there. Then we have our growth rate here growth rates, which are some um, basics uh, which we are borrowing from, um, let me see, uh, which, Malim, which is the word on the white part of the board? I have said except The cost of each is determined in the same way, except that in case of flotation, I see someone, Ali, has already um has already answered there thank you now we are bit I'm, I'm just discussing about the issues of our growth rates because sometimes they might not be given um you might be getting a lot of challenges when these questions are coming and then um, uh, we, we 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 just say there are two methods there there are two methods two methods there are two methods used to determine, or they are used. To, uh, there are two methods used to uh, used to calculate the growth rates. There are two methods which are used in the computation of growth rate. One, when we are calculating our growth rate, sometimes we can use this formula. Here we can discuss about n minus one. We normally look on the most current dividends. The most current dividends we divide by the most past. The most past dividends. After we do all these computations, we normally subtract one. After all that computation, we normally subtract one, right? Now, the second method basically used under the computation of uh, growth rate, we normally say to get our G, we normally take B times RE, where our B is normally 
are called retention ratio. Retention ratio. How do we normally get our retention ratio? It is normally gotten, right? Because there is a proportion which are basically determined by the organization when they are paying out dividends, right? Um, uh, basically called the payout ratio, which is basically used to determine how much are we giving out to the, to the investors? Or how much are we going to be retaining to the organization for the investment purposes? And in that case, to get your retention, you normally take one minus payout ratio. One minus payout ratio. That is how we normally get our retention, right? Then we normally have RE, which is normally called the return on equity. The return on equity. And uh, how do you normally get the, the return on equity? ROE, you normally get it by taking PAT, you divide by equity. P, uh, the, the profit of the tax, you divide by equity. Or alternatively, Alternatively, um, the return on equity can sometimes uh, be used as a capitalization rate. The cost of equity basically can be used to determine or can be used. Examiner can be giving you the, the capitalization rate to mean our return on equity. We can be able to determine that later on in our questions. Later on in our questions. I just want to look on our second uh, costs, uh, component costs, our second one. A minute, please. I just want because already we have done or we are done with the the first component cost and now the computation are supposed to be done. Allow me to introduce to you our second component cost. Our second component cost. Allow me, please. I don't know why my dust are here. I'm not able to rub my. I don't know. Let me use the other one. Probably is not able to help us. Well, let me just wrap up that point. I'll be in a position to, uh, to introduce the second component cost, and we are discussing about uh, the costs of preference. Um, the, the cost of preference, um, the cost of preference shares, the cost of preference shares. And in this case, we normally discuss about KP. Normally discuss about KP. And um, here is where majority of us lies because we are the preference shareholders in most of these organizations where we have, bought, we have, uh, we have already bought some shares. And in this case, it means uh, this is just the requirement or it is the required rate of return. It is the required it is the required rate of return. It is the required rate of return. It is the required rate of return by preference shareholders. By the preference shareholders, right? You can be able to recall when we are calculating KP, right? We used to take the preference, uh, the preference dividends. We used to take the preference dividends. These are knowledge we are doing in under section three. We divide by the market value. We divide by the market value. And we say, in case of a discount, in case of discounts, in case of discounts or flotation costs, in case of discount or flotation costs, it reduces the markets. 
it reduces the share price. It reduces the share. The share price. It reduces the share price. And get our KP now. We take our preferred dividends. We divide by the market value minus discount minus flotation. The discounts minus flotation. That is what basically we have to be taking on when we are computing the cost of preference shares, the cost of preference, uh, the cost of preference shares. And then the NB here, we are saying, allow me just to put an NB here. We say, when the shares, when the shares or where the shares, where the shares are issued at, at par, are issued at par, the par is the original price of the securities, stroke nominal value, stroke the nominal value, we are saying KP simply, KP simply become the coupon rates. KP normally becomes our coupon rates, uh, stock dividends. Dividend rates here. Yeah. Uh, you're supposed to be asking a lot of questions. It means sometimes you may find an examiner giving you the, the par value, but in the additional information, it says the nominal value of the, the, uh, the, the preference shares is 10%. And then in the requirement, they ask you, what is the par value, right? Then it means the nominal value is the same as the par value, right? It is the, nom it is, it is the same as the par value. Um, it is the same as the coupon value. Then it means there is no any computation. You just need to equate to mean that the part, the nominal, and the coupon mean the same thing. It will be the same thing. Allow me to go to the third component cost. Allow me to go to the third component cost. And the third component cost, we are doing uh, the cost. We are doing the cost of um, the cost of debts. We are doing the cost of long-term debts. So are we doing the cost the cost of the long term debt? Let me just wrap here. Because when we are discussing about the debt, we remember well when we were doing section three, we said debts are normally uh, grouped into two. We normally have irredeemable, where that uh, the those uh, those um, um, uh, we did, uh, the we, we normally have irredeemable bonds, and then we normally have redeemable bonds. Let me use the term bonds. Right, number three. Number three, we are discussing about uh, we are discussing about the cost of long term debt. And in this case, we are discussing about KD. And we say this is the uh, it is the required this is a required rate of return. These are required rate of return. These are required rate of return by providers. These are required rate of return by providers of long term. This is the required rate of return of, um, of long term debt finance or long-term debt finance, right? In this case, we are discussing things like debentures. We are discussing about debentures, stock bonds. We are discussing about the two. The minute I pick a phone here. It proceeds. I remember we were discussing about bonds being categorized into two. We have the redeemable bonds. We say when you are discussing about the redeemable bonds, they don't have a maturity period. They don't have maturity period. And these bonds are here. They redeemable bonds, right? So how are we going to be calculating 
uh, the cost of redeemable bonds. And uh, when you're looking on it, let me just elaborate it here. To look on the irredeemable, irredeemable bonds, right? Because we have said they don't have a maturity period, it means we are going to be entering the interest, right, to infinity, because these bonds do not mature. So in this case, to calculate the cost of debt, calculate the cost of debt, it means I'm going to be taking my interest, I divide by the market value, right? And remember, in case of a discount or flotation, it is going to be affecting the market value. So I divide here by discount or flotation. Then remember that um, remember the interest on uh, the interest on debt or the interest on loan. It is an allowable expense, and therefore it normally uh, assists us uh, with the with the reduction of the. Um, it normally it, it normally provides the tax yields, and therefore the interest they normally qualify for for uh, the, the tax purposes, and that is why we are adjusting for our tax, right? But remember that uh, remember that when you are discussed with the redeemable bonds, we are saying these bonds, these bonds have a maturity period. They normally have a maturity period. And when they have a maturity period, it means when you are going to be calculating, right? When you are going to be calculating the cost of debt, we say that when you are calculating the cost of the bonds, we use we use bonds yields. We use bonds yield to maturity. We use bonds yields to maturity. We use yields um uh, bonds yield to maturity. The biggest question is the yield, uh, the, the, the yield to maturity, it means it is a pre-tax. The pre-tax, it means that um, we are computing our cost of debt. If we are using the yield to maturity, it means we are calculating a pre-tax cost of debt. We are calculating the pre-tax cost of debt. Therefore, it means, how do you normally get these, the, um, the pre-tax cost of debt? It means this is how you are calculating it. The pre-tax cost of debt. Then we are just doing a bit of uh, analysis of our topic, right? Just do, I think, uh, around one question. Some of us might be shifting the attention to our news. So it means to calculate our yield to maturity, it means we normally take our interest plus one over N, right? Then we take into brackets, we take the, the face value, find out the market value, we divide all of these with a half of the face value plus market value, right? That is how we normally get our yield to maturity. And it means when we are discussing about N here, it means N is our number of periods. N is the, the number of periods. We are also discussing about uh, F, um, FB. These are our face value. Or we are supposed to be discussing about the power value. Then we have MV. These are market value. Those are the market value. It means if we want to calculate the cost of debt of redeemable, we now want to take the yield to maturity. Then we are just for tax because this is a pre-tax cost of debt. It is a pre-tax cost of debt. Therefore, if we want to calculate uh, using the uh, if we are, we are using the yield to maturity, the yield to maturity are pre-tax, then later on to get the cost of debt, we have to be adjusting for tax purposes. We have to be adjusting for tax purposes. I just want to engage um, to doing an illustration there. I just want to do um, one, uh, one or two illustrations. And then I will start with the question they tested on May 2019. There is a question they have done in May 2019, question 3B. And then I will be able to do a question they tested on uh, our previous semester regarding the, uh, the same, right? But after I introduce to you the WCC, just allow me to go to May 2019. Yes, can I rub all of these? Yes. Well, I just want all of the questions to fit here. 
you will forgive me if today I'm a bit fast. May 2019, question number 3B. May 2019, question 3B. Let us go there. Let us all go there. And once again, I say thank you for keeping you waiting. Um, I'm still there. In 2019 this is November. Let me look on May. So advanced financial management. Who is reading for us? Someone? Just volunteer yourself and you talk to us. Question 1B. Zomolo Limited. Can be? I remember, number one, we are being told to discuss what types of risk associated with investments in real estate investment trust. I remember I gave you um, that handout. I don't know whether you are able to do it, uh, but um, what I can be able to add uh, there is that uh, uh, some of the, the risks um, involved or the types, we have systematic, uh, which... Um, um, cannot be diversified. So we have a systematic risk, just giving them directly. We have gearing, which is a financial risk. And we know those are the risks associated with the use of the debt finance. We have also the business risk. Um, and those are the risk of, of, uh, of a trading or trying to do too much with too little capital. That is uh, some of the risks associated with real estate. I have said we have systematic risk unsystematic risk, we have gearing, stock financial risk, we have business risk. We will just be able to search and then you look on the uh, what is needed there. Now, allow me to do the Zomolo limited question. That is a question that we just need to do right now. We have been told Zomolo limited is a firm operating in the manufacturing industry. The firm's current capital uh, structure is given as follows. We have the honorary share capital, 8, 8 million, 10% the redeemable debenture capital of um, uh, 30 million. We have the reserves of 20 million, 8% preference share capital, 20 per value of 20 million. When you see those per values, it means they are the original price of those securities. But the additional information we have been told, the current market price per share of the firm's ordinary shares is that 4.80 come dividend. What does the come dividend mean? It means that the market price per share is inclusive of the dividends which were already issued to the public, uh, the dividends which were already issued uh, to the shareholders. Uh, number two, we have been told the firms adopt a 60% dividend payout ratio. The most recent earning per share of the firm is eight shillings. The historical dividend per share over the last four years are given as follows. I'm being given uh, 2015 to 2018 uh, with a dividend per share provided there by the examiner. But we have been told this way that the firm's management is contemplating to invest in a project which would cost 40 million. The project is expected to generate 9 million shillings each year in perpetuity. But the project has an estimated beta of 1.50. But we have been told there that the return from our diversified market value is 18%. Number eight, we have been told the debentures are considered to be risk-free and are, value, are valued at par. We shall be able to check on that and we see what at that point means, which I was able to analyze earlier. Number nine, we have been told there, the existing 8% redeemable preference shares are currently trading at 25, uh, 25 shillings each. But number 10, we have been told the cooperation tax rate is 30%. Number one, and this is a question which um, I was able to introduce you to the Godon uh, when we are doing the mergers. But in this case, we have been told, can we be able to calculate our return on equity? Sorry. Using the Godon's draws approximation method, we are going to be getting remarks there. Number two, we have been told to calculate the firm's existing weighted average cost of capital. Then number three, 
we have been told to project the risk adjusted discounted rate. Now remember we were able to do it under topic number one, but I will be able to repeat it so that uh, you can be able to understand about uh, what does it mean. Now, what I will be able to do, and uh, because of already I just want us to understand that uh, when we are dealing with WMCC, it means we have to be dealing with the existing capital structure of the organization. As we are just analyzing, when we are dealing with WSCC, we just need to analyze how does this organization operate? We don't need to go beyond that. How does the organization operate? In this one, they are telling us it normally use the ordinary share capital, the redeemable debentures, and then we have the preference share capital. Someone can be able to tell me some reserves. It means all the limited liability companies are required by uh, by the act to be able, or by yes, by the act to be able to reserve some capital uh, with the Central Bank of Kenya. These reserves are basically used during the uh, during the the difficulties periods of the companies. The, 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 it is just some of your finances which already are existing, but they are supposed to be um, allocated or set aside for uh, to be used when the company is struggling. That is the case for the reserves. Now, let's just uh, uh, go directly uh, to calculate the return on equity as required by the examiner there. And uh, allow me just to do it uh, using the formulas provided, which I was able to give you. So um, in that scenario, in that case now, remember I was able to give you some methods which we use to calculate the gross model. And in this scenario, because we just need to get our question very quickly, we are going to be using the both questions. Uh, we are going to be using the both, uh, uh, both, uh, both what? Both, 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 both methods. Now, in this case, we are saying n minus one, take the root of, we say the most current dividend. All right. We divide by most past. Most past dividends. Once we finish calculating all of these, we subtract one. Correct. How many number of years? Because we say any the number of periods is provided there. Yeah? When I see the periods provided in this question, we are given four years. From 2015 to 2018, I think it should be four. Allow me to use three. The most current dividends, remember, the most current dividends is per the chart provided in 2018, we are given for 4.80, right? But in this case, it is very important for us to do the computation, right? Because already we are given come dividends. We are given come dividends, right? And given come dividends, it means how much of the dividends? If, the, if they were not given, how will I be able to calculate my DPS? Let me just put it here. If they were not provided, I just want to get the DPS. I will take the earning per share. I multiply by payout ratio. If they were not provided, then it means my annual purchase per the question in note number three, we are given eight, and then I've been told the payout ratio is 0 0.6. This translates to how much? 4.80 per, per share. You are correct? That is correct. Now, if that is 4.80 per share, you ask yourself, the examiner was able to give you come dividends, right? If the examiner is giving me come dividends, it means these are these dividends, right? Or the market share includes includes the dividends. It includes the dividends, right? Dividends issued. So it means when we have come dividends, you need to get your X dividends. I should be taking my come dividends minus uh, minus the dividends. Minor the DPS. Let me just use the name DPS. Now, in that scenario here, remember we are given 34.80 minus 4.80. It means you are dividends which were issued, the market price per share, sorry, the market price per share should be X dividends, right? So it means my market price per share should be 30. Now, let me just return here to my question. Let me just come back here. I think Rose is struggling today. Let me look on the most current dividend. Our most current dividend is 
whether they give you or they fail, if they fail, they will provide the tool. They will provide all of that. If they fail to give you, they will provide us. The most past dividend of ours, these are the dividends which we, use, we issued in the first year. And in our scenario there, we have four. These are the first dividends that we issued. They are the most past. Then the, after computation of this, we subtract one. Where should I start? When you are doing this computation, start with the, uh, with the division before the root. Let me start with the division before the root. And in this case, I just need to take 4.80, correct? Divide by four, getting 1.2. Then type this three in your keyboard directly. We say three, shift. You just say three, then you press shift and kabaton kanakana mayo. Shift this button. This you press directly from the keyboard, but you have to press shift and this button. Then you are going to be having something looking like this. Then you put your 1.2 inside there. Right? Where we are getting, where we are getting 1.063 minus 1, we should be getting 0 0.063 or 6.3%. Correct, which we are getting around 6.3%. Uh, and after we get that 6.3%, allow me, because I want to get something, uh, uh, something regarding to, something regarding to the return on equity as per the required of the question, right? Let me use the, the second formula so that I can get the, the return on equity. Because you remember we say, the growth rate of ours, we can also get it by taking RE, we multiply by the retention ratio. Remember, this is what we are looking for, return on equity. The return on equity. That is what we are looking. And we have our retention ratio. The retention ratio, we take one minus payout. So that is one minus. You can see our, our, our payout ratio is 0.6. So I just need to subtract it here, 0 0.6, getting 0 0.4. So our growth rate now, we have it. Our growth rate, we have it. I just say 0 0.063 should be equal to the RE times 0 0.4. Divide here by 0 0.4, divide here by 0 0.4. That and that one goes. The return on equity of ours should be equal to how much? 0 0.063 we divide by 0 0.4. And I can see we are getting something closer to 15.75% if you put it, um, um, well, if you can be able to use it uh, when you're using the discount. When you use the discount, you'll be able to get this. Uh, sorry, when you multiply by 100%, sorry, sorry, sorry. When you multiply by 100%. That is the requirement for our question. That is the first requirement. Number two, we are looking on the WCC, and I will just be able to know this. Whether you are calculating the WCC or you are calculating <laughs> WACC, the first thing that you have to be doing is the computation of the component cost. Whether you are calculating which uh, WCC or you are calculating, don't forget our market price per share, kindly. Whether you are calculating the WCC or you are calculating WCC, the first thing is the computation of the really computation of the um, component cost. Allow me to, co to compute them, right? Allow me to compute them. And in this case, because the examiner number two is asking to calculate WCC, uh, allow me now to compute the component cost. Allow me to compute the component cost. And I will start with the first one, right? I will start with the cost of equity. Ke, correct. We know the formula for the computation of cost of equity. And before I determine, I should be looking on, am I given the expected dividends or the current dividends, right? And when I look at it, these are the dividends which have already been paid. Correct. Now, in this case, it means, to get my cost of equity, 
I should be using the O, 1 plus G, we divide by P, O, minus B minus F, it is the available, plus G. Some student they know is asking, when am I using the for the retain time? And when you have me to me and this bonus position, I say this. To separate these two, they will be separated when you are calculating the WCC. Why am I saying, am I saying this? Because there is a concept that is normally called breakpoints, I'm going to be introducing to you when you're calculating WCC. At this stage, don't factor uh, any retained earnings. Ours is just the computation of the cost of equity. Remember, the deal of ours, we have it here. The most current dividends of ours is 4.8. One plus, our growth rate is 0 0.063. We divide by the PO. The market price per share, I said, should be exclusive of dividends. And in this case, it should be 30. Are we told that these dividends have discounts? Are we told do they have discounts? We say uh, we have not been told they have discounts. So in this case, they don't have discounts, they don't have flotation. So what I just need to, to add here is 0 0.063. Now, after that, let me just do my computation straight away. Let me just do my computation. Am I doing my computation? It should be 1.063 uh, times 4.8 divided by 30 plus 0 0.063. Someone should be telling me, Mwalimu, I'm getting around 23.31. percent. 23.31%. That is what you're getting at the cost of equity. Number two, number two here, number two, I will be able to calculate and never calculate something that is not existing. Calculate all the corporate cost which is existing in the question. Sometimes some students may say, Malimu and Itwambia, we calculate all, all, of our, all of three because they are how the component cost should be. I say no. If, for example, examiner has given you the cost of equity and debt, don't calculate the cost of preference share because it will not be there. The requirement for the computation of that will not be available. Now, in this case, allow me to calculate the cost of preference shares. And we discuss about the KP. And we say, you can just write your formula. We say, to get my KP, I should be taking the preference dividends. And in case we have the market value down here, in case of a discount of flotation, I subtract. Correct. In case of a discount of flotation, we will be able to deduct down there. So how am I going to get the cost of uh, preference shares? I say, in the question, we up there, in the capital structure, we are being given 8%. That is the, the interest of the preference shares of these dividends, right? And in this case, it means we take 8% of the power value. The par value of the preference shares is 20 shillings. Then we divide with what? We are being told in not number, which number? Not number, um, let me just look for it. Uh, hmm. Which not discusses about uh, the cost of preference shares. Let me check. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Uh, the management is contemplating the project is expected, correct? Okay. In note number nine, we are being told the existing 8% renewable preference shares are currently trading at 25. It means the current market price is 25 shillings, right? In this case, and remember you convert this cost into percentages, in percentages. The first one will be 0 0.08, 0 0.08 times 20, correct? We divide it by 25 times 100, I should be getting something closer to 6.4%. I should be getting something closer to 6.4% if you use your calculator well. Then remember already the examiner had, had told you, the examiner has told you in note number eight, the debentures are considered to be risk-free and are valued at par, are valued at par. So it means the interest rate which is supposed to be used here the interest rate which is supposed to be used here, we should be saying in, in number three, to get our KD, because they are irredeemable, we take our interest, we divide by the market value in case of discounts of rotation is subtract, 
then we are just for taxes. And because we have been told they are issued at par, remember there is an NB which I was able to write somewhere. There is an NB which I was able to write somewhere. It means that when these are issued at par, then the coupon become the dividends, become the interest rates. And that is why in this case, if I was to calculate, for example, if I was to calculate this, it means I will be able to take 10% of the par value, a par value of ours is 100. They are still trading at par value. You divide by 100 here. It means I'm still getting 10% pre-tax. 10% pre-tax. Rather than doing all these, rather than all doing this, a white student will see, a white student will see, they are still trading at the same uh, price, uh, at the same price, then the, 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 the brighter student will say 10%, one minus 0 0.3. In this case, they will be getting 7%. Rather than doing all those computations, a weather student will just take it directly and adjust for tax purposes, get after tax. Get after tax. Any question? Any question? Someone is talking somewhere? Okay. And that is why I, I say if the bonds are selling at par with no flotation cost or discount for both the redeemable or redeemable, um, the pre tax cost of debt equal to the interest rate and the open rate. And I was able to write that NB earlier on when we were computing all this. Allow me now to take you through the computation of WCC. I do. Allow me to go there. Allow me to compute WCC now. So when you're computing your WCC, let me just to clear space here a bit. It should be something closer to that. You see whether it will fit. So in this case, it will be, we normally have source. We have weights. We take our costs. Then these are the costs eh, which we have calculated. Then we shall take our weight times costs. Correct. Okay. Let's start with the weights. Uh, sorry, the sources. Where are we getting our sources? We say we have only three sources. The first one will be equity. The first one will be equity. And when I discuss about the equity, when you write this amount here, all the security should be valued at the market values. It should be valued at market price. So in this case, it means if we are discussing about the equity, get the number of shares, multiply with the market price. Let's start with the, the equity, which comprises in our scenario here. We are discussing about the ordinary share capital. So in this case, I just need to take what? I take 80,000. Just assume I have limited all my, my amounts to, to a thousand. So it will be 80,000 80, divided by 10. Getting the number of shares is 8,000. Then you multiply, how much do these securities trading in the market? We have said they trade at that shilling. So 8,000 times 30, getting 240,000. Correct. 240,000. The second one will be the debentures. The debentures, they are still trading at 100. And rather than waste a lot of time, because they, are, they have not changed, it means the value of these debentures will still remain. And the one provided the question, which will be 30,000. Even if, if you calculate, it will be 30,000 divided by 100, which is the power value, times 100, which is the power value. Then you are going to just be getting the same thing. But then I could just sumbua, just write it directly. The other one will be the preference shares. The preference shares, I remember they have the market values. Um, it means uh, when I look on the preference share capital, it means we have 20,000 divided by 20, which is the power value. But the current market price, we are given 25. The market price is given as 25. How much it is? It means. I will take 20,000 divided by 20, divide, oh sorry, multiply by 25. Here we are getting 25,000. Just take the total. 
how much is the total? So I just need to take to 40,000 plus 75,000 and 75,55. And I get 295,000. Then get your weight by taking, for example, here we take to 40, divide by the total, 240,000 divided by my total, I get 0 0.81. The other one would be 30,000 divided by 295,000. It means I'm getting 0 0.1. 0 .1. Then we have 25,000 divided by 295,000, getting 0 0.08. Should be 0 0.08. Correct. Then uh, it means. I have to be adding something somewhere, um, something led by 295,000. Um, allow me here to use 11 because this proportion should be a, a hundred percent, uh, one because of probability. Let me see if it totals. Uh, it should be one, exactly. Now, allow me, that is just an assumption because of the rounding of errors. Now, allow me here to be taking my, uh, my cost directly. Um, the first one for the equity will be 23.31, correct? The second one for the preference is 6.4. The last one we have said is 7%. Is this 7% by the way? Correct, it should be seven. So let us multiply the weights times costs. Let us multiply the weights and costs. How much are we getting? I start with the first one, 0 0.81 times 23.31, getting 18.88, correct? 0 0.11 times 6.4, getting 0 0.70. Then the last one will be 0 0.08 times 7, getting 0 0.56. What would be our WCC here? What is our WCC? It would be 0 0.56 plus 0 0.70 plus 18.88. This translates to 20.14%. 20 20.14%. 20 20.14%. 20 Point that, point, point that. Any question to that point? Any question? Now, there is a requirement number three of the question where we were asked about the computation of risk adjusted. Risk adjusted discounted rates. Risk adjusted discounted rates. And in this scenario, allow me that to get risk adjusted discounted rates to use SML, security market line, where we'll be able to use CAPM now. And in this case, it means I will take the risk free rate of return plus the expected return of the market minus the risk free, then you multiply by the beta coefficients. Now, the risk free rate is already provided in the question. Right, the risk free rate is provided in the question. Um, in which note? Let me just check there. The risk free rate of return is already provided, not number. Mm -hmm. Let me check. Okay. Mm. What is the expected return of the market? We are being told there. In not number. Um, in not number what? Um, the risk free rate of return, by the way we should, shall be able to use the one for the debenture, if it is not provided use for the debentures. So in this case, for ours, we use 10, plus the expected return of the market, we are given 18 minus 10. Then you multiply by the beta coefficient, provided in which knots, not number six, 1.5. 1.5, how much it is? Use board mass, eight times 1.5, plus 10, getting how much? You're getting something closer to 22%. You're getting 20, 22%, 22%, 22%. I have said 
If the risk free rate of return is not used, use the one for debentures. Use the one for debentures. I think we are in agreement at that point. We are in agreement at that point. But um, as I conclude the WSC, because that is what I just want to conclude now, allow me to do April 2023 question. April 2023. April 2023 question as I, 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 I wrap up um, our today's session. <laughs> There's someone talking. Someone is ex asking about explain the term static trade off theory of capital structure. Someone to give us a solution tomorrow. Allow me to do part two, right? Part two of the question. Someone should be ready for us, please. Part two, a volunteer. I'm not choosing one today. Someone reads, please. Yeah, yeah. Go on. I selected financial information for the limited is John Bido. Yield to maturity on debt, 8%. Market value debt, 100 million shillings. Number of order shares, 10 million. Yeah. 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 Market is yeah. yeah. ordinary yeah. share. That is cost of capital is well equity finance, 3%. Marginal tax rate, 30%. Continue. Additional information. Additional information. Johnson, a financial analyst, expects that an increase in table limited financial leverage will increase its cost of debt and equity. Number two. Based on examination of similar companies in table limited industry, Johnson Jogu estimates that the company cost of debt and cost of equity at various debt to total capital ratios are as shown below. Estimates of table limited default as cost of debt and equity. Debt to total capital ratio, cost of debt, percentage, cost of equity, percentage. 37.7, 8 8.4, 12.5, 13%. Ah, I don't know who was reading in the from Porteza Sun. Rose, thank you so much. Let me just go yes. through it very quickly. We say, Selected financial information for Tembo Limited is shown below. We have yield to maturity on debt, 8%, market value debt, uh, 100 million. We have the number of ordinary shares, 10 million. Market price per share, 30 shillings. Cost of capital, if or equity financed, given as 10.3%. The marginal tax rate is 30%. Additional information, one. Jo uh, Johnson Jogu, a financialist expert, expects that an increase in Tembo Limited's financial leverage will increase its cost of debt and equity. Now, from there, number two, based on the examination of similar companies, based on the examination of the similar companies in Tembo Limited industry, Johnson Jogu estimates that the companies a cost of debt and the cost of equity at various debt uh, to total capital ratios as shown as below. 
Um, the estimates of Tembo Limited before tax costs of debt and equity, we are being provided here. So we are being given the, the debt to total capital ratio, 20 to 50, the cost of debt provided there. We have the cost of equity provided in percentages there also. Now, the required we are being told there that uh, determine the debt to total capital uh, ratio, that would minimize a Tembo's limited weighted average cost of capital. And that is, we are given five marks there. Some of us might have uh, come across this question. They might be asking themselves, how am I going to be doing this question? And this question is very simple because there is an area where we are being told that um, there is a proportion provided when we are being financed by, by um, total 100% equity finance. The proportion is already pro uh, provided. So it means if I want to get the five marks of the question, this is what I'm supposed to do. Just follow up here. This is what we're supposed to be doing, correct? This is my mark pen now. Okay. Now, in that case, it means, in that case, it means you're doing a prelim 2023, question number one, part two. Correct. Now, in this case, it means the analysis should be looking like this. You're supposed to be analyzing your debts, right, in percentages. Correct. It means we have our equity, our equity in percentages. Correct. Then it means we are going to be writing our formula here for WCC, where we have to be taking the weight of equity cost of equity plus weight of debt cost of debt. Then we adjust for tax purposes. That is what we write down there. Correct. Now, in that purpose, or in that case, it means we are going to be starting with our first uh, first uh, statement provided of the question. We are going to be starting with our first uh, statement provided. We are being told, John, um, based on the an examination of similar companies in Tembo Limited industry, John Jogo estimated that the company's cost of debt and the cost of equity at various debts uh, to total are provided there. But before that, we are being told up there that the John Jogo Financial explained that an increase in temple uh, financial leverage will increase its cost of debt and uh, equity. So in this case, we are being told somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be starting when, um, uh, sorry, okay, okay, I have seen something that I was looking for. In bullet number five, where we are being given 10.3%, we are being told the cost of capital, if all equity finance is 10.3, it means there is no debt is, which is going to be used, but we are going to be using 100% of the equity. Then it means the WSEC uh, for these will be 10.3%. Correct. That is what the examiner means. The, the data will not be applicable, but we are going to be 100% financing it. Then the WCC will be 10.3%. We start our question from that. Then the second one is we, we approach the, we approach the number two, as we approach the additional information number two, we are being told here, We are being told here that um, the debt to equity capital ratio, the debt to equity, it means the debt to equity, if the debt is 20, then, uh, sorry, if the debt is 20, debt to equity, it means debt is 20%, then the equity will be 80. I think you are able to understand the ratios which we have already given there. They are saying debt to equity, it means the debt is 20. Then the, the other proportion would be equity. It means under the computation of your WCC, the the weight of equity will be zero point. The weight of equity will be zero point eight. This one, we multiply by the cost of equity. How much is our cost of equity in this case? The cost of equity, 
is provided there for 20%, uh, which is 12.5. We just put it directly. Plus the weight of debt. How much is the weight of debt? It means our weight of debt is 0 0.2 times the cost of debt is already provided there is 7.7 .7 times 0 0.7 because of 1 minus 0 0.3. And this is what first you have to be checking on. Don't multiply it directly up to the, the weight. So in this case, it means when I take my calculator there, I will start with 7.7. .7 uh times 0 0.7 uh times 0 0.2 then plus i open my bracket 0 0.8 times 12.5 i'm getting something closer to 11 point 11.08 percent 11.08 percent 11.08 percent 11.08%. The other one, the debt to equity ratio provided. Someone is asking, am I writing? Yes. I'm writing. What is happening? The black body is black. Let me check what is happening there. Let me just check. Sorry for that. Thank you. Thank you for updating me. So now you can be able to see, I was discussing about these aspects which you have to be understanding very well. I was talking about 20 to 80, 20 to 80, the debt to equity means the debt is 20, the other proportion is equity. Then you'd be able to calculate your WCC using the, the formula provided there. When you look on the another debt to equity ratio provided is 30. It means it's 30. So that is the debt. It means the equity is 70. When you come to the computation of WCC, it will be we are taking about, we are talking about um, 0 0.7 times what is the cost of equity provided? I'm being given 30 plus. Right, plus what? The weight of debt is 0 0.3 times what I can be able to see there is 8.4 times 0 0.7. Allow me to do so. How much will be that one? So when you take your calculator out, it will be, I start with 8.4 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.3 plus you open your bracket 0 0.7 times 113 sorry i'm getting around 10.86 10 10.86% i am let us go next the next one we have 40 40 is that it means this is 60 so let us go to the other side it means it will be 0 0.6 times the cost of equity, it is 14. Yes, it should be 14. Plus 0 0.4 times how much is the, the cost of debt provided there? 9.3 times 0 0.7. So 9.3 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.4. Then you open your brackets for additions of uh, the equity side 0 0.6 times 14, getting around 11 percent. Getting around 11 percent. The next one will be the next one will be how much? The last one will be 50. If this is 50 or so, this is 50. Correct. Then it means here that uh, the WCC will be 0 0.5 times the cost of equity. 
Providing the question is 16, correct? Plus 0 0.5 times how much? 0 0.5 times 10.4 times 0 0.7. How much is this? 10.4 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.5 plus, open your bracket, 0 0.5 times 16 getting around 11.64%. And the examiner is asking you a very simple question. From that analysis that you have done, from that analysis that you have done, right? From the analysis that you have done, determine the debt to total capital ratio that would minimize. And I just be able to come here on this side and I look on the one that has the minimum. How much is the minimum here? Which one has the minimum? Which one has the minimum? From the computation that you have done, because it should be, the, 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 you cannot be able to tell me the first one, because already we are being told the debt. The examiner is asking, determine the debt to total capital ratio. That would minimize Tembo's limited Weighted average cost of capital. Which one? Which one? Someone to answer me there. Let me, let me check on some. So let us make our decision here. Because already the examiner is asking about the mixture. You cannot be able to tell me the mixture of 0 to 100, no. The mixture that minimizes it is this one. Can you see that mixture? It is the one that has the minimum, right? And in that case, when I'm making my decision here, you say the mixture which will be able to minimize the WCC or which will be able to minimize the WCC, um, let me just write it there. The optimal, the optimal, the optimal total capital ratio, the optimal capital ratio, the optimal capital ratio. That minimizes WACC. That minimizes WACC is 30%. Is that a percent? Is that a percent? And then uh, where the WACC, is 10.86%. 10.86%. Six percent. That is the mixture which will be assisting you to minimize the WCC. It's the one that is assisting us to minimize the WCC. We cannot have the mixture of zero to hundred. There is no any mixture there. And uh, any question about that point? Any question? Rose, are you okay? Hi, Rose. Hi. I'm okay. Are we together to that point? Are we together? Yes. Yes. Allow me to close my books up to that point. We meet on, uh, I think we are meeting on Sunday, yes. Let us meet on Sunday. We do WMCC. Then because this topic is a bit. Yes, Ali, we have a class on Sunday. Yeah, now you cannot miss. We are doing WMCC. Um, next week we are doing. I pray God that on Monday I don't have anything, and we are not going to man the man on now. So on Wednesday we do capital structure theories, and then on Thursday we finalize with the special topics in financing because a bit wide in that manner. Then on Sunday we can introduce our last topic as we engage on um, finalizing it as early as we can. Um, 
I thank you for participating. The Sunday time we can do, will we do a still at eight? What is the best time? Someone, everyone can type. 